relationship, Rodika. What about love? How can we Mm -hmm. um, bring feng shui into our homes to improve our love lives? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are several ways. And the main way, the main thing that I always look for in a home and I consult and I can say that, I don't know if many people would like it, but I can affirm that 100% that there, there can be no happy home if the bedroom in the home is unhappy. And it doesn't matter if that's a bedroom of a single person, of a couple, or of a family, a couple with many, many children. If the bedroom has negative energy and happy energy, this will be an unhappy home because it starts in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, it's the wow. main door. I, I, I speak a lot about the main door. That's how the energy comes in. But what maintains and keeps and nourishes the energy in the house it's a good energy in the bedroom, adult bedroom. Um, again, no matter single or, or couple. Um, and the reason I say that is because you spend, not only because you spend eight hours there and your energy is so intimately connected to the energy of your bedroom. It's also mm. the place where you seek refuge, where you go for love and intimacy. It's enormously important, enormously important. And again, somehow in the West, we, we are a bit, I don't know, illiterate or we are, Ignorant or we are too busy to pay attention or whatever other words, uh, you know, we can use. So love, to how to attract love. Um, you, you always start in the bedroom and, uh, love for adults is love and sensuality. Uh, well, I wouldn't say they're one and the same, but as an adult person, we experience, love has many faces, right? Like, of course, but, uh, it's a sensual energy, right? Our sexual energy is sacred and it's so powerful. So ideally you would be connected to your sexual energy and, you know, circulating mm. it and, you know, sharing with people you love. So unfortunately I've been in so, 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 so many bedrooms, like many, 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 and very few are actually loving beautiful bedrooms to begin with. So oh. look at your bedroom oh and honestly, just, yeah, I oh know that's sad. So look at your bedroom and honestly say, wow, do I feel like, Loving myself or loving another in this place is it is it does it make me feel uh, that's well no aroused maybe not aroused but pleasurable and happy and nourished turned and on safe. yeah turned on is a good yeah. one I mean maybe not everybody wants to but I love on, how right? everyone passionate turned good on. <laughs> passionate and, and safe too right so there's like a wide range of um feelings that you'd want in your bedroom. You want to feel safe and cocoon because that's where it starts, right? You want to create a container, a safe place. And all the way to wild passion. So you define the range. But for God's sakes, it has to be a temple of, of love and nourishment and, and, and a healthy place because you are there for eight hours. And if you have, you know, your computer or an electric alarm clock or, or clutter, you are disrespecting your own energy and draining your energy. So there's so many levels to creating a good bedroom. Wow. And you can have tons of info online, but I so encourage people all the time. She just does. go into your bedroom. Yes. Really, just go into your bedroom and please just pay attention. You know, pay attention to your art. Many people have art when I ask them, why is it for? They go, oh, oh, it's been there for like forever. <laughs> you even forget the art that is there. Don't forget, it's like anything that is in your bedroom has to have a purpose. You know, mm. and a radical exercise, if you want to be real, you know, you want to attract stronger love or you want to have a stronger relationship, take everything out of your bedroom and bring only what really, really has meaning and connection to you. And you'll start creating mm. a really intimate relationship, not only with your partner, but with every item there, because every item has a voice. And we, we think of inanimate objects as like, oh, it's just a da-da-da, oh, it's just a... No, it's not. It's an energy, right? We, we don't see it this way, but everything has to be respected and, you know, ha- has a certain place in it there and a reason for being there. And then it comes back to tenfold, you know. You wake up and you feel, oh, I'm happy for no reason. <laughs> I mean, maybe Yeah, which reason. is the well, best feel... way to wake up. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so or what I'm hearing are... Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. So I, I hear a few basics here. So number yeah. one, there can be no happy home if the bedroom is unhappy. I think yes, that, yes. That's yes. incredible. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. bedrooms are for us to seek um, refuge, to have a quiet Mm -hmm. place, but also for intimacy either with ourselves or with somebody Mm -hmm. else, Mm -hmm. and and, um, also for cultivating and and maintaining that sexual energy, creative energy that's inside of ourselves to keep that replenished and healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what I heard you say is one of the most important questions is, beginning when when we walk into our bedroom we need to ask ourselves 
do I feel like loving myself and someone mm-hmm. else in this room? Mm-hmm. Basically, you ask, what is the... When you spoke about being intuitive, we, we, we are, I believe we are all intuitive. Not all of us pay attention to, you know, to, to that. I guess it's a matter of cultivating it. But you ask, like, what is the, Definitely. if, if it had a sound or a color or a scent, what is the scent is in this room? Is it lavender or is it dustbin or whatever, right? Like, what is the, <laughs> what, what is the energy? What, what, what's the voice? So of course the voice in the bedroom will be very different from the voice in your living room. Hopefully so. Because it's a very intimate place. Um, mm. and, and the bedroom is for intimacy and healing. So it's for, you know, your body needs to regenerate when you sleep. And ideally, you, you are, you, you cultivate this loving energy in yourself. Sensual, loving, mm. turned on energy, whatever words we use. Yeah. Either one or the other, right? Either, either in whatever space you are. Because it's best how your health is so connected to you being, uh, expressing or being connected to this warmth in your body. So that's where love starts. I mean, then I'll, I'll see in a second. Maybe we'll move on. But <laughs> I don't want to move on from the bedroom. <laughs> I can, we know, we can talk about it for hours. But um, I think we should stay in the bedroom for sure. <laughs> Some of the yes, ladies let's have stay questions. There. Definitely. Let's yeah, stay there. Yes, those. let's stay there. Um, um, well, let me just briefly then say, because there is another area of love and marriage that you can work on. But that's secondary okay. because primary would be your bedroom. Um, and. Um, Let's see. Maybe you, maybe you ask me a question, or maybe I'll go. Let's see what's the best way to go. I have a question I'll, for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we have our beautiful temple of love in our bedroom. And mm-hmm. let's say we take that technical aspect of feng shui, and we, we've cleared out the clutter, and then we go to mm-hmm. the energy map, and we see that our bedroom is in a different area than our love and marriage. Mm-hmm. So, does that mean that we would have to put in different things in our bedroom then? Um, and and how would we address the love and marriage area? Would we be using, mm-hmm. this, like, the same colors? Because I do want to talk about that. Would we be using the same kind mm-hmm. of lighting? Like, how does that work? That's a very good question. That's a very good question, yes. So, um, your bedroom would really be in a love and marriage area. It doesn't have to be... It, it, it doesn't have to be. Let me make it very clear, right? Uh, your love and marriage area, if you use one bug, it's in the southwest area of your home, so it can be anywhere. And the fact that your bedroom is not there, what I'm trying to say, doesn't mean neither good nor bad function. It's just what it is, right? So let's, so we are looking at two different parts here. One is your love and marriage area in the house. Right. And the other one is where your bedroom is located, right? Right. So I'll start with where your bedroom is located. Your bedroom can be located in any of the eight areas. It can be in the, your career area, or it can be in your fame area, or in your spiritual growth and cultivation. So um, I can't talk about all of them right now. It will be impossible. I have it all online. But <laughs> what you do, basically what you do, you, you first you start with the guidelines for the bedroom, always and always. Just like we spoke, right? The bedroom is for healing and, and creating love and supporting love, nourishing love. And then you think, okay, so this is what I want in my bedroom. This is what I want to create. But my bedroom is in my career area. Now, that doesn't mean you create an office there. I hope so. I very much hope so that there is no <laughs> there are no office-related items in your bedroom. But on a deeper level, you can support career energy with the elements of metal and water. So uh, you may not want too much water in the bedroom. You don't want too much water in the bedroom. Let me make it very clear. But metal, let's say metal colors can be beautiful. White metal, white color is a metal color. So I, you also work with your intent. You say, okay, I'll bring white color because this is the color of the element to support my career area. So a lot of functional mm. work, intentional work. You don't bring metal um, shelving or you don't bring, you know, pictures of your or your diplomas in the bedroom. You don't because you ruin the bedroom energy. You go on a bit deeper level and you think, okay, what does this Bagua area need? What does it need? It needs, it needs water energy. Well, do I want water in the bedroom? Uh-uh, not so much. But what other element is good? The metal. And then you look at the expressions of the metal element. And maybe you find two beautiful metal sculptures of two lovers. There you go. You have the metal yes. element. Or, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Right? So you, you look at it. the guidelines. And you, yeah. So you put the two together in a very, but, the, but you always pay, the priority should be on the function of the space. So the function of the gotcha. bedroom is as we discussed, right? Uh, exactly. You don't overwhelm with, with, yeah. So this was, that was the first part. And the second part of your question was, uh, what do you do in your love? How do you strengthen your love and marriage area? 
say 11 right. marriage area. Yeah, so you find it. Let's say 11 marriage areas in the kitchen, which is absolutely okay, right? It's, it's just where it is. Right, because it's, it's sexy because not... that's where the oven is. <laughs> and here is the fire. And it's not the best place to have, actually. Right, you've read a lot, haven't you? Because <laughs> fire is good for the earth. Both fire and earth are good elements. So what you do is it doesn't mean you bring statue of lovers into the kitchen because that may not be, you know, I mean, maybe it works in some kitchen, not in others. But again, you start with the primary function of the space of the kitchen. And the kitchen is the heart of the home. And the kitchen is where you mm -hmm. hopefully cook incredibly good food and you have friends together, children together, or it's, yeah, it's always absolutely. fresh food, right? So that's the, the, the energy of the kitchen is the heart of the home and the, the joy, the joy, the richness, the aromas, the freshness, right? The warmth. Um, and you, and, and which is very close to love. So then you think, okay. Yeah, it sounds very special. And, yeah, 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 absolutely, right? Yeah. So love and marriage area needs fire and earth elements. You can bring, an earth element is beautiful in the kitchen. You can bring terracotta pots. You can bring, you know, like uh, uh, fire is there because the oven is there. So you work with the elements. But you can also bring, maybe you bring art of a Parisian cafe, like two lovers in a Parisian cafe that, maybe with some food or just coffee or whatever, right? So there is some food there, but there's also love and there's a sense of coupleship or togetherness of two people. Uh, or maybe two people at the in a restaurant, right? And there's food, but there, that is good for the kitchen. But there's also love. Um, so you you start, just like we did in the bedroom, you start by maintaining uh, the energy in the kitchen, strengthening it with the guidelines that the love and marriage area needs. And you exactly. would avoid what it does. Yeah, you would avoid what it doesn't need. Love and marriage area doesn't need a lot, doesn't like a lot of water, so you wouldn't have a lot of mirrors in your kitchen, and you wouldn't have them probably there anyways. And you wouldn't have a lot of metal, too. So you play with elements. I always encourage people to understand the elements because it gives you a wide range of a big playground, you know. And you're not limited to wind chimes or Mandarin ducks or something that's like. You know, come on, it, it can work, but there's a wide variety of um, energy tools or decor items you can use. Yeah. Me, <laughs> yeah, I, I am. Yeah. yeah. So, so what okay. I'm hearing uh, is mm -hmm. that first, the primary thing is that we look at the space and the function of the space. If it's a bedroom, mm -hmm. it's receiving, it's for making love, it's for intimacy. If we look at the kitchen, it's obviously for for cooking, for food, for company. And so that needs mm -hmm. to be our primary focus. But if it's yes. located in an area where the the energy is, is a little bit different, let's say our bedroom mm -hmm. is in our career space, then we just bring in, like, accents to yes. support yes. the energy of the career into the bedroom. Or we we bring in accents of love and marriage into the kitchen to... Mm -hmm. to um, to nourish that 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 energy mm -hmm. space is that and you do that true? yes very very clear okay. exactly and you do it with a clear intent so feng shui goes a bit deeper i mean decorate when we decorate we use intent too we want to create beauty but in feng shui you you you're being very clear you almost talk to the item you know you you you're working with energy so that's why this is there it's a specific you know magical work in a way it goes deeper there's like um you reinforce it with your intent. No, that's mm. why it's here. Because I want the natural element to support the career energy, right? You, you, you're becoming quite powerful <laughs> when you start, you understand that you, you ask it to do a certain work for you, you know? Yeah, yeah. so, so you can use feng shui to really empower yourself and empower mm -hmm. your relationship, which is what I'm yes. hearing. So yes, let's go, yes. let's, let's talk about empowering them even more. What are, like, mm -hmm. what are some colors or, um, lighting or layouts that are really good for the bedroom area to increase intimacy and, and connection and passion and love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the colors, the best colors are always uh, the skin colors. And you know, you know, we know the skin colors can go from snow white to really rich chocolate colors, right? And they're all beautiful colors, sensual skin colors, right? And it makes sense because that's where your body needs to feel relaxed and nourished. Mm. So uh, um, you can also call them earthy colors because they're very close, or colors of the earth element. So those are the ideal colors for the bedroom. <clears throat> the colors that are not so ideal for an adult bedroom, feng shui wise, a deep, deep blue colors. I know some articles, I read some articles online that say that deep blue colors is good for sleep and it's good feng shui. It's not. Um, 
uh, I would avoid a lot of deep blue, a lot of deep greens in the bedroom, cause, in the bedroom, in an adult bedroom, because they kind of go against the feeling that you want to create. The ideal colors, so going back to ideal colors, um, the skin colors, yeah. or the earth colors, with fiery colors, right? Fi- warm, fiery colors, and that can be warm coral orange or warm yellow, butter yellow. Mm. So depends on your, you know, you have to love them. Some people love red colors, some people don't love red. So if you don't like red, maybe a soft coral orange or an, or or a gentle pink or soft pink or or a magenta color. So look at the fire. Again, I have all the colors on the website. Like I have a color wheel and I have separate infographics for each element. And choose a color and fire because you want some fire brings passion, right? So you always want some sort of sure does. <laughs> fiery colors in your bedroom. And uh, don't go be, you know, stay within your comfort zone. What I'm trying to say is that don't go, you know, choose what you love. You know, don't go, oh, no, I'm going to, if it's red, I'm going to bring red in the hatred. Don't. Um, so okay. choose what sticks to your warmth. And then candles, of course, are ideal. You can bring fire with candles, with images of fire. So colors, so um, <clears throat> the, the answer to the question on colors is the fire and earth colors are excellent. And beautiful. again, I, I said about blue and green. You can bring blue and green accents for sure. You know, those are beautiful colors. What I mean is that don't have a deep blue, uh, completely deep blue bedroom or, do you know what I mean? Don't bring it as a focal color, just an accent. You don't want a deep it blue. It can't be the primary. Deep. Yes, the primary or the focal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you asked about lighting. Lighting, uh, I think ideal, uh, lighting for the bedroom. Candles are the ideal lighting and natural candles because the many candles have toxins. So it depends on if you have good, um, you know, uh, aerated bedroom oven, maybe you can do with simple candles. If not, better have beeswax or soil candles. Um, a salt lamp. I love the salt lamp. I love the salt, Himalayan salt lamp. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the bedroom is ideal because it brings this fire energy and it purifies the air. So I adore it. Uh, we have several mm. in the bedroom. I love them. Um, lighting, intimate lighting. That's the best lighting for the bedroom. Uh, some people, I mean, if you want, if you like to read in the bed, um, you know, you'd have this yeah, task lighting. Yeah, that's that. uh, Yeah, you have task lighting that has this moving, you know, uh, neck, and it's and, and it focuses. The, it slides just on one pool of it, pool of. Uh, on your book, basically, not everywhere. The worst lighting is the ceiling light, you know? The ceiling light that sucks the energy right away and makes the room feel so dreary and sad and avoid wow. the lighting, you know, those lights at all costs. So have this pool, pool of lights, you know? Um, three levels of lighting are ideal, like, you know, considered ideal for any room. Play with that, but please avoid the, uh, like, those ceiling lights because they are, they just, they can become depressing very quick, you know, just, yeah. Mm. Int- oh, I love that. lighting is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm hearing <laughs> colors, earth elements, skin colors, really, really um, beautiful, creamy whites to really, 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 really dark browns. And Chocolate then colors, I'm also yeah. hearing, mm-hmm. yeah, that's gorgeous. And I'm hearing fiery colors, magentas, mm-hmm. pinks, um, warm tones like coral, butter yellow, um, mm-hmm. and then images, uh, or excuse me, lighting, <laughs> um, candles, mm-hmm. but make sure they're natural so that it's not releasing mm-hmm. any toxins, salt lamps, mm-hmm. which are really good for our health. Um, mm-hmm. and, and they come in a variety of, of, um, shapes because I've looked them up on, on yes, Amazon yes, before and they're like all different styles, uh-huh. which is nice. Um, intimate yeah. lighting. And if you do want to read, that's fine, but get, get a lamp that's, um, pretty focused so when you turn it on it's just in one area and completely mm-hmm. avoid ceiling lights because that suppresses yeah. the energy yeah i mean if you want to have them you have them right again it comes back to you experimenting i'm not it's it's your bedroom so i always encourage a person to your bedroom you decide what you're going to do <laughs> but at some point you'll see such a huge difference between the bedroom the ceiling lights and intimate lighting right so my, i say play i say play and see what feels right to you uh, what yeah. More relaxed and intimate, yeah? Yeah, perfect. Cool. Mm-hmm. And are there any specific layouts? That layouts. I have, yeah. I have them. I have the drawings online, actually. I have, there's an article, there is an article saying the, uh, the best bedroom layouts and the worst ones. So you, you, you'll actually see it visually. Um, I think the best one. The best one is, um, <clears throat> 
it's always easier to see, but the best, the best one is called, and uh, the so-called commanding position. And you want the bed to be, you want to see the bed as you come in, but you don't want the bed to be aligned with the door. So basically, gotcha. when you come into your bedroom, you want to see the bed and think, oh, I'm just, I can jump in there and just, oh, it looks so beautiful. And, but you don't want it to be aligned with the door because then the energy escapes. Uh, and then there are a couple more, but I would encourage if, if you, if our listeners want to see them all to go to the website, um, nofunctuary.com and see the best and the worst one. Uh, yes, we will definitely there. put a link up for there and, um, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll mm-hmm. make sure that link is up there for everyone, um, to see. Mm-hmm. And, oh, I'll send you the link. I'll send you the direct links for the articles. Okay, sounds good so that they don't have to Thank look you, Rodika. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, cool. So, and the art, Amanda, just a second, maybe for the art, we can talk just briefly about the art in the bedroom, right? I don't know if you're going yeah. to ask me or not. Yeah. So just paying attention to the art in your bedroom and actually choosing it with intent, especially the art when you wake up, what is the first thing you see? And before you go to sleep, mm. what is the last thing you see? Because that programs your mind, that creates your mood. So um, be, be mindful that the visuals are so important. You may not pay attention to that every day, or especially if you're used to it. But question, go around the bedroom and think, does it really belong there? Does it belong here? Do I love it? Does, so bring only what supports the energy of love and sensuality and healing and nourishment and let go of anything that is not at all um, in that zone, <laughs> loving zone, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, Rodika, mm-hmm. I heard that um, it's it's good to have images of of lovers or, or mm-hmm. things in two in the bedroom. Is that true? That is true because um, uh, when you um, let's see, how do I put it the best way? So we all want to be we all want to be loved. We need to I don't know, want or need we didn't choose the word, but there's this need for love, right? And and it can be the love it is the love ultimately with the divine, but it's expressed through a person ideally, right? So this the sense of togetherness, you know, and that togetherness can be most often expressed in a lover, in, in, in a lover, right? So um mm. The t- togetherness is, we, we as humans, we express it by being in coupleship, right? Choosing, a, you know, to be a, a, as a couple. So, but sometimes they can be very, oh, there's so many central images of women and, uh, you just don't want too many, especially if you're a single woman. But I wouldn't say that, I would never say that a beautiful image of sensual woman is, um, uh, not good function in the bedroom. It's beautiful because it brings the energy of sensuality. Just be aware oh. that, let's say, if you're single and if you're looking for a man in your life or a, a partner, you would want to also have this sense, to balance it with a sense of togetherness. So you bring sensuality mm. and female, feminine energy that is just so soothing and healing. And also the masculine energy. So you have both, either inside yourself or expressed as being in a couple. Uh, togetherness is a good word, isn't it? <laughs> you know, togetherness. Is, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> So, is there any last thing that you'd like to say before we um, see if there are any questions? Uh, about the bedroom, Amanda, or about the whole home? What do you think would be... Uh, I, I I think about... Uh-huh. Well, you have an idea. I, <laughs> yeah, I just had a thought. I just had a thought, yeah. So, because we speak about love, right? So, let's, let's focus on that. Yeah. So, also, if you are... Um, either you want to attract a love relationship or you want to strengthen the one that maybe is going through challenges. Uh, so you start in the bedroom always and always. And I don't know, we didn't mention cleaning the closets. I mean, ideally, all your closets will be beautiful and clean, but especially the one in the bedroom because it's closest to you. Um, uh, so the last thing I want to say, you start in the bedroom, but it, it doesn't end there. The, the, the love energy, the functional work doesn't end there because you would then start at the front door and think, okay, when energy comes into my home, what how, what do I program it with? How, what, what does it speak of? So do I... Inc- it's almost like you bring a certain color to the energy that comes to you or you say, okay, this is what I, I would love you to do for me. And and you express the love language throughout your home, you know? As soon as mm. you come in, is my, is my home speaking of love? Is there any loving... Whatever it is that love means to you, is my bathroom, you know, central and loving and how can I take like luxurious baths and feel really nourished? So your whole home, 
not just your bedroom, but it starts there. Your whole home ideally has to speak the language of love, it, it, not necessarily romantic love everywhere, but love, because love ultimately is the same energy, right? Um, yeah. That's what I wanted to say, to just be sure to not just stop in the bedroom and that's it, everywhere, 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 everywhere. <laughs> you know, it's... The, um, have it continuous, have it in a continuous way. And it doesn't mean you're going to have erotic love pictures in the, I don't know, the dining room or in the, maybe in the living room. Maybe you won't. Maybe you have little children, with, uh, whatever it is. Uh, or, but you, it still loves. You still find ways to support the loving energy um, throughout your home. Mm, that's yeah. beautiful. So what I heard you say Thank is you. just really breathing love into every part of the home and, and making mm-hmm. sure that it, that your home really um, resonates with love and, and speaks yes. of love. Yeah, I love exactly. that. Yeah. Oh. And it's gonna give all this. It's gonna give all this love back to you. You know what I mean? I mean, you love your home. It's gonna love you back tenfold every time you come back. So it's such a beautiful work to do. You know, it gives you love right away. It's a, it's a conversation and um, it's, a, it's a beautiful. Yeah, relationship. like you said, it's a relationship. Yes, yes, yes. So just be more love. <laughs> More and more. There's never too much, I think, you know. If it's genuine, there's never too much, yeah. I love that. Thank yeah. you, Rodika. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to check welcome. over and see if there are any questions mm-hmm. for from from the people, from the from, from the other guests. Let's mm-hmm. see if there's something. Okay, so I'm seeing one about how can a room be more balanced with um, masculine and, and feminine energy to bring in that, that sense of togetherness, like this person is worried about their, their bedroom being too girly so, so, oh. and, and their partner not liking it. So what would, what would some solutions be for that? That's a very good question, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So when you, so the, the first, uh, thing I would encourage uh, you, the listener, to do. Uh, we don't have a name, no. <laughs> so the first thing I would encourage you to do is to first think for yourself what does masculine energy mean to me. Either maybe you have a boyfriend or you want a boyfriend or a husband. What, what, how does that energy feel to you? And how would that mm. person would how would that person express how do you express this energy in your home, in, in, in your bedroom? Uh, I, I salute you for understanding that too much girly, too much girly stuff is not really welcoming to a man. Because you, if you want to welcome him home, you want to create a sense of home for him too. Um, so that's the first step. You ask yourself, you go do a bit of searching and say, okay, I'm attracted to this type of man. Um, this is how they are. This is how they, you know. So, so try to replicate this energy, or at least feel it. Uh, how is that expressed in decor elements? Well, masculine energy is usually a more straightforward, more clear. It's a very present energy. So, I would kind of limit a lot of to flowing, flowing, flowing stuff, and have some clear, um, mm-hmm. maybe clear some like straight lines. Straight lines, yeah, not the, I mean, I, I was about to say that, then I said straight lines, but avoid sharp corners, right? So you, you just create a, oh, sense, oh, of, yeah. uh, <laughs> a sense of preciseness along with the flow. You know, the most beautiful thing is when you have this grounded sense of presence and clarity and preciseness, which is a masculine, beautiful energy. Then you have this flow and flourishing and because the sense of safety is provided. So that might not be of much help visually, as I say it, right? Um, uh, bring it in colors. Let's say black and white would be the colors that would bring the sharp masculine energy right away, right? More on, or, or deeper chocolate browns, uh, if mm. you want to speak of color. Uh, overall, I would take a good way to do is to take all the things that you think are too girly or too whatever, take them out of your bedroom and see if you can do without them and bring only one or two that actually look good. And also, you can think, start thinking of your bed as his side and her, and her side. So try mm. to leave his side kind of like leave it empty for a while. Don't fill it with the teddy bears or flowers or what I don't know what, what you mean by girly stuff. Just leave it empty and, and little by little see how would he take ownership of his side of the bed, right? So make space mm. for a lover uh, on an energy level. You don't have to feel it right away. You don't have to immediately create masculine energy right now. No, make space for it and fill it out. 
And eventually you'll see something that is like, wow, this so reminds me of what I want. Or it's just exactly, maybe it's a postcard, maybe it's a picture of a man you saw in a magazine and think, oh my God, he just makes me feel so incredibly <laughs> loved and adored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put the picture there and you bring this energy. So start slowly but surely and, and do it in a genuine way. Don't rush. Don't rush. Oh, just I love your that. Family. Yeah, only your feminine energy and all, all the beauty that you bring. And make space, just leave it open and let, it's gonna happen. Make space to honor the, welcome you know, that divine masculine, a strong masculine to, to come into your life. Yeah? Mmm. So what I'm hearing is if you're single, it's really cool to think of the kind of masculine energy you would like in that room and then mm-hmm. replicate that with colors or with design elements. Um, mm-hmm. and then, and then, um, what if you're in a partnership, is it a good idea to, to literally stop and have a conversation with that person about what would make them, you know, feel that good is a, that, space? Is, that is also an excellent question because what I see with clients a lot is that women, as women, we tend to nourish and create and sometimes we tend to do a bit too much. So I see with couples, I see that women tend to kind of take over the bedroom, which is a bit unfair, isn't it? I mean, we want to do our best, but it 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 it, it kind of weakens the male energy in the bedroom. So if you're in a partnership Ooh. and you feel, yeah, and if you feel like, oops, I've taken over out of love, out of big love and desire to nourish, then you kind of step back a bit. And you can need to start with a conversation, but energetically, just step back a bit and think, wow, I've been a bit too bossy or too whatever, or too loving or whatever. Those are just words. Step back right. and think this is as much his bedroom as mine is, right? He, he's, it's not like half, half, whatever it is, but it's as much his space as mine. So maybe you don't start immediately with a conversation. You converse with yourself and you let your energy kind of like lay back and relax and think, I, I, I'm just going to give him space to do whatever he wants and, and maybe take some things that you put on his side of the bed that you think should be there, just take them out, just give him space. Basically, I oh, give him space. Mm-hmm. Um, and he would, um, maybe at some point he'll talk, maybe you won't, but maybe he'll ask it himself, like, oh, what's happening? There's something, something happening here. But if you are in a partnership, I encourage my woman clients always and always to just step back and relax. We always tend to do a bit too much, and sometimes this goes against the relationship. And let the man create what he likes on you. You know, and he said, yeah. it. and it, it can it can be a process, and it can be you know, I don't think it's going to be a struggle because you know, not, I, yeah, I, it's just giving space to them because male and female energy are so different, right? And and uh, um, w- it's good for us to step back a bit and um, let our talent, you know, <laughs> just just um, step back a bit, step back a bit, and let the male express himself in the bedroom too. It's it's only going to make the relationship better. And mm. he said, maybe talk. Yes, maybe at some point talk. Maybe at some point you will talk and say, hey, which, how would you like to be? What would make you happy here? What would you like to bring? And you'd be surprised what you'd hear, right? And then you play together. Or maybe he'll say, I have no idea, baby. <laughs> That's good too. But you just give it, give it space. It's like always a good idea to give space. Yeah? I love that. To not take what over. You're mm-hmm. about is, yeah, what you're talking mm-hmm. about is really um, being very, very feminine and letting go, stepping back, opening up, and then seeing yeah. how he comes forward. That's really the feminine principle that I talk about all the time in love. That anyway. is true. So allowing, that's allowing. That's so beautiful. It, right? But somehow yeah. we tend to, I see somehow the feminine energy, we tend to take over our bedrooms. There's another part of feminine, the nourishing one, the one that needs to take care. Of. And I see that over and over and over, this woman in the bedroom, decorating wise, we tend to take care, take over completely. And that's, it's feminine too, right? But it kind of creates the opposite effect. I love that you said that, Amanda, that's true, right? So go back into the feminine and just relax and allow the masculine to emerge. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I mean, oh my gosh, we could talk about this for days. But, <laughs> um, I know. But I, I love that you said that because that nourishing energy can also come across as, as motherly. And that's yes, not yes. what, that's not the kind of feminine energy that you want to be in with your partner. Um, Very so true. Thank you. Yeah, yes. so I'm so glad you said that. And um, that's really beautiful. Mm-hmm. So, um mm-hmm. 